Uh, hi, I, my name is Richard. I'm in recovery for religion. Uh, I've been sober from religion for about 14 days. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with the religious right, but this is my Jerry Falwell giant print Bible. Um, uh, they called me from Liberty University, the religious right school I graduated from, and they told me that they're concerned about me becoming apostate, which is if you stay away from their church long enough, they believe you're going to be damned. Now, Jerry Falwell taught me a concept of God that he was a hitman. It wasn't God the Father, it was God was the Godfather, because we made people offers they couldn't refuse. To graduate from his school, we had to knock on your door, and we were worse than the Jehovah Witnesses. We would say, hi, would you like to accept God's love into your heart? He loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And if you don't accept him into your heart as your personal savior, he's going to torture you and roast you in fire forever and ever. <laughs> So wouldn't you like to receive his love? <laughs> I didn't do too well, so this is literally true. I'll swear, hey, I got a Bible, I can swear on it. They sent me back when my numbers were low for converts, and we had a videotape called The Burning Hell. I still have a copy. My wife wants me to throw it out, but I keep it. And it's people in fire just going, ah, ah, burning, ah, for about 30 minutes. And we would ask people if we could show them a video you know, on their television, we would show that. And then at the end, we said, well, wouldn't you like to accept God's love? Because if you don't, that's going to happen to you, you know? So my numbers went up with the burning hell video. But I'm still looking for loopholes here. The problem is, though, they couldn't agree on anything. When I got there, Falwell said I had to be rebaptized. This is absolutely true. He said my baptism as a Catholic didn't count because I was sprinkled as a baby. I needed to be fully immersed as an adult. I said, are you sure about this? He said, yes, John, the, by the way, he had a very low voice. He said, John the Baptist was a Baptist, and you have to be baptized as a Baptist or you will burn in hell. So, you know, yeah, I let them dunk me. The problem was, I I'm a, wrote gospel rock and roll music, and I played in a Pentecostal church, and I went there, and they said, have you been baptized? I said, yes, sprinkled with the Catholics, dunked with the Baptists. They said, not good enough. The, baptize, the Baptist baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Spirit. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus only. So I got baptized in the name of Jesus only, and then I, a week later preached at a Grace Brethren church where they said, have you been baptized? I said, yes, in the name of Jesus only, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit, and I was sprinkled as a Catholic. They said, not good enough. You have to go be dunked three times in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, I can see why Adam now uh, is uh, running away from religion, but I'm going to let you in on the trade secrets. I've been stalling a little bit, but I am going to, for the first time tonight, reveal to you the million-dollar trade secrets of how to be a, a, a professional evangelist. I, I still have my notes from my Bible here. Now, the first thing you have to do is you have to know about the Oz. Does anyone here probably not know about the Oz? The Oz have to be punctuated after the words just so, and we had months and months of this. It took me a while to get it. But when you talk uh, after the words, uh, you have to say, ah, uh, after everything you say, uh, and yet you have to have the timing and this, the, the voice, it has to come just like that. It was a little difficult for me as a bit of a, uh, the nerd of the class, but I got it down after a while. Now, he wrote here the second thing. I got a, I got a B plus on the uns. The other thing was the preacher voice. Now, Jerry Fowler, this is absolutely true. In his early preaching career, he was a southern boy and he had a high voice like this. But he learned to do this voice that would sound like the Lord God speaking like this. The third thing he wrote on my preacher boy class was the one. Now, this, this is very important. The one-legged chicken hop. This is when the Holy Spirit really moves in the fundamentalist churches. I'll teach you how to do it. You balance on one leg. The other leg is extended. And you do it kind of like this. Okay? And this has to all work together. It's just very... It, it takes a lot. So I got a, a B plus on the one-legged chicken hop. I got a C on the voice. I tend to, I tend to not sound authoritative, but... I have my grades here from Liberty. Oh, the Holy Spirit hand raise, yes. I got an A for this. That's pretty simple. You just kind of, you could probably all do that, right? Holy Spirit hand raise. Just put it up like that. There you go. Holy Spirit hand raise. There you go. So, you, okay. Oh, now you have to have a, here it says, clear God concept. Biblically sound God concept. God is a mean SOB. We don't have time to go into all the, all the background for that. And Jesus was a Republican. You have to become very clearly <laughs> solid on your doctrine. Forget all those scriptures about feeding the poor and all that stuff. Um, oh, most importantly, most importantly, 
the timing of when to take the offering. So you got it all? The ah, the voice, the one-legged chip and hop, Holy Spirit hand raised, Jesus is a Republican, and take the offering at the right time. So you put it all together, and for your final grade, you have to do something like this. Turn with me now into the Word of God. The Holy Ghost is here. I feel moving in this place. Hallelujah. If God has called His people to pray, and we're going to like Sarah Palin, because she is called of God. It's Joan of Arc was called of God. And Sarah Palin, hallelujah. Sarah Palin is called, uh, as Mary was called to birth our Lord. She's going to birth a new America. Glory. Do I hear an amen? Uh, and as Deborah in the book of Judges uh, returned Israel to the Lord, uh, Sarah Palin uh, is going to return America to its moral foundations. Uh, and the judgment of God will be upon us. And if you don't listen to everything I say, he will smite you and smote you. Oh, I feel his wrath in this place. Oh, he's mad. But there's one thing that will appease him, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Hallelujah, I see it here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm getting a word from the Lord right now. Yeah, I understand. He said no noisy money. <laughs> no clanging coins. Uh, only nice soft bills in this plate, hallelujah. And if you give me $100 right now, you will multiply to 1000 Because our ministers in crisis. We're about to go off the air. They're about to repossess my house. And if you don't give me money, the word of God will not go forward. But if you do, it'll multiply back. One smart ass one time said, then why don't you just give money? You'll give money back. You won't need any, any, any of ours. But, well, I'm just going to wrap this up by telling you about, real quick about two of my preacher boy classmates you might enjoy meeting. It takes a lot of wind out of me, I'll tell you. I haven't done that for a while. <laughs> Glory! Well, I'd had two preacher boy friends of mine named uh, Hank and Frank. Really, this is serious. Hank was hyper-spiritual. He thought the devil was behind everybody and everything. And he had to have a direct, audible message from God to do anything. Frank, we called him Frank Fundy because he believed all Falwell's rules were inspired. No rock music, no going to movies, no holding hands with girls, no single dating. This was the concentration camp of my Bible college. <laughs> now, I went to Denny's the first day of school. This is true at Liberty University. I was sitting in Denny's with hyper-spiritual Hank and Fundy Frank. <laughs> when it came time to order, hyper-spiritual Hank said, Lord, what do you want us to order today? I sense the spirit leading me to order a country fried steak, praise God. <laughs> Fundy Frank said, I don't have a peace being in this den. There's a world of people in here. We can't be unequally yoked. But being boys in 1920, we started thinking about dating and girls. Now, when I went out with a girl, I was concerned with one thing and one thing only. Was she hot? Not Fundy Frank. He wanted to make sure she believed this was the inerrant word of God. Oh, sorry about the pen there. So on his first date, he would say, do you... Now, Frank didn't know the preacher boy voice that you, we can turn it off. You don't have to keep doing it. He did it 24-7. So he would go out on a date and say, do you believe uh, the Bible is the inerrant, uh, inspired uh, word of God uh, from Genesis 1-1 uh, to Revelation 22-21? If the girl liked him, she'd say, sure. <laughs> and do you believe... You know, he believed the King James is the only right one. That the King James is the only anointed version. Uh, and all others are perversions. Uh. <laughs> About this time, the girl would run for the door. But he came back to the dorm one time, all excited that he was going to get engaged. He met the girl he was going to marry. I said, Fundy Frank, how do you know? He said, I was praying going to the laundromat. Uh, and I said, Lord, I want a wife. Uh, not just any wife, uh, but a godly wife. Uh. One that does not wear makeup. One that always votes a Republican. 
One that does not listen to rock and roll. One that does not go in for mixed bathing. I said, mixed bathing? You mean you would actually take a bath with the girl you're dating? No, that meant swimming. If you're not familiar with the Southern Baptist vernacular, you can't swim with girls at a pool with bathing suits on. It could lead to sinful thoughts. <laughs> so he said, I went into the laundromat, and I saw a girl I liked. And I said, what are your convictions? She said, I don't wear makeup. I don't listen to rock and roll. I don't wear makeup or go in for mixed bathing. He said, hallelujah. And they're married to this day. Now, hyper-spiritual Hank, he also found a girl. And this is a true story. My wife will verify it. I don't know if she slipped in tonight. She will verify this is true. He called me up about a month into their marriage. Then it's about two months. And said, we can't conceive. Brother Rossi, what should we do? Demons have blocked my wife's fallopian tubes. <laughs> Satan is trying to stop us from conceiving. Would you bind these demonic powers of hell that are stopping me and my wife from conceiving? I said, Hank, may I ask you a simple question? How often do you and your wife have sex? Well, we work we're like ships passing in the night. and We've only been able to have sex maybe once every two months. I said, the Lord's showing me this might be part of the problem. I said, and on those couple occasions, what happens? Well, she thinks it's a little sick, so immediately after she runs to the bathroom, kind of washes up, cleans up. I said, the Spirit is showing me uh, <laughs> that every night uh, you two are to uh, become one flesh uh, as under the Lord. And when that happens, the Spirit is showing me uh, that your wife should lay down on her back uh, and elevate her legs and thighs like this uh, for about 20 minutes. Uh, and as Sarah, who was barren, ha, and Rebecca, who was barren, conceived, ha, he will bless you with a child. And to this day, honest to God, unless somebody sees this on the internet, if you film this and put it up, to this day, he literally believes he miraculously conceived because I had a message from the heavenlies. But thankfully, they do have a wonderful child. <laughs> and I think I'll close with a song I wrote this morning when Adam asked me to come. It's a very brief ode to my former... Chancellor Jerry Falwell has passed away fairly recently. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Jerry Falwell taught me well. He said, most of you will burn and fry in hell. Especially if you're Democrats. You'll be where the fire is really hot. Jerry, you taught me The Lord is one mean SOB But I still believe Jesus loves me Well, the last conversation I had, he called me since I moved to California and I heard that booming low voice on the phone. This is true. Brother Rossi, how are you doing? I was trembling in my boots, you know. But I did tell him, you know, I've come to believe in a Jesus of love instead of a Jesus of law, in a Jesus of compassion instead of a Jesus of condemnation, in a Jesus of grace instead of a God of guilt, and a God who heals people instead of hurts people. And uh, Jesus loves me, this I know. Maybe we'll close with a song. For the Bible tells me so little ones little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes jesus loves me yes yes jesus loves me the Bible tells me so. God loves you. I love you. Thank you.